Today we're learning the language of Disney World. This is episode 10 of the Go Inform podcast. everybody. Welcome to episode 10 of the Go Inform podcast. Today is day two of our 10 days to a better Disney World vacation. I am your hostess Maven. And today we're going to be talking about the language of Disney World. Disney World is one of those places that's so big that it kind of does have its own language. There's a lot of commonly used words and phrases that you're going to see when you're learning about Disney World, when you're out there uh, looking for information, and when you get into the parks too. And so before we get too far into our um, set of episodes here about the parks, I thought it would probably be really useful if we just talk a little bit about some of the lingo that you're going to run into when you are um, learning about Disney World and when you're visiting. So I thought of almost 30 different kind of phrases and um, words and things that you'll come across that I thought might be useful to translate for you. And so that's what I'm going to do today. And I'm also going to put all of this information on the show notes for this episode, which you'll be able to find at goinform.net slash 10. And um, so if you want to have a reference, a little bit of a Disney dictionary, I guess, um, you can head over there and uh, grab these show notes and have this for um, future reference. So um, there's as I said, there's a lot of different things that you're going to come across with Disney World. There's abbreviations that are sort of cryptic. Um, and there's a different, they use different words for things than um, a lot of other places. And um, so I'm just going to go ahead and jump right in on the the biggest, most common thing that you're going to see. And that is the name of Disney World. So the official name for Disney World is Walt Disney World. And when you get onto the website um, for Disney, or, you know, looking at guidebooks and lots of other resources, often you're going to see Walt Disney World. And um, that's because that is the official name of the of the whole place. And the abbreviation that you'll see very commonly is WDW. So, and so for you guys who've been coming across stuff that's um, a WDW related, that is why it's WDW. Okay, so that's the first thing. Okay, so let's step into some of the other culture of Disney World. And one of the big things that you're going to see or hear is. It, the employees, all of the employees at Disney World are called cast members, like they're on a movie set. And that's uh, something that Walt Disney himself decided way back when he opened Disneyland is he wanted all of his employees to feel like they were part of the show. And so they are always referred to as cast members. The other uh, side of this is that anyone who's visiting Disney World is called a guest. So um, you will be a guest when you visit Disney World. And instead of customer service, it's guest service. So um, every park has at least one place where you can go for guest services. That's you. If you need any help with anything, go to guest services and they will take care of you. Okay. Also in the parks, the things that most of us refer to as rides or shows or any other kind of activity in the park at Disney World, these are attractions. So when you are looking for information about, especially like on a Disney website and you want to find out about a ride, you're going to want to look up attractions. Everything, pretty much everything in the park they refer to as an attraction. 
behind the scenes in the park, like behind the closed doors, that's called backstage. So you cannot go backstage unless you are a cast member. So I think you guys are getting the idea that a lot of this language comes from the movies. And that is where Disney started. So that's what they wanted to bring into the parks. So backstage off limits to guests. Okay, so let me see. Um, Okay, a few other terms that have to do with the rides and attractions. Um, Something that you'll commonly hear people refer to certain type of ride. It's called a dark ride. A dark ride is what most of us think of really when we think of a classic Disney ride. It's a ride that's in the dark. You get in some kind of vehicle and you kind of ride through a story. That is a dark ride. When you're going to the ride and you're waiting in the line, the, the line area, waiting area, that's called a queue. It's spelled Q-U-E-U-E. And a, a queue is not just the people in the line, but it's also the actual physical space of the line. So some rides even have what's called an interactive queue, which means that there's stuff for people to do while they're waiting in line. There's activities and um, just diversions and stuff like that. Um, Some of the rides at Disney World that have interactive queues are the Peter Pan ride. You can like catch butterflies on your finger with a in a shadow. It's really cool. I know that sounds weird, but you'll see. <laughs> and um, the Haunted Mansion has interactive elements in its queue. Um, and so there's quite actually quite a few uh, rides that have interactive queues. But anytime that uh, someone's referring to a, a line or waiting area for a ride, it's called a queue. So now you guys know. The queue is going to have a couple of different entrances at pretty much any ride. So there's two ways that you can wait in line at Disney World. One is called the standby line. And that is just what you would think. You just get in line and you wait. And however long it takes to get on the ride, that's how long it takes. So the standby line is just your standard kind of queue. The other kind of line is fast pass. So at Disney World, they have a system called Fast Pass Plus. Fast Pass Plus is a reservation system that allows you to reserve a time to go get on a ride without waiting in the long standby line. So you can um, pre-reserve this time, and then when you um, when the time comes, you go through this Fast Pass Plus line. And usually you only have maybe, depends on the ride, you might go straight on to the ride practically. And sometimes you'll have maybe a 10 minute wait to get on the ride. But Fast Pass Plus allows you to skip the line. Fast Pass Plus is accessed through the Disney World website. And also they have an, an app called the My Disney Experience app where you can make your ride reservations. And we're going to be talking more about making these reservations a couple episodes from now in um, day four of these 10 days. So I'm not going to get too much into it, but just let you know that um, you are going to be able to reserve um, several ride times every single day. um, without having to wait in a line. So when you go to Disney World, Yes, you'll wait in lines, but because of Fast Pass Plus, you'll be able to skip the line um, at least for part of your day, which is awesome. Um, but again, we're going to talk more about that on another day. Fast Pass Plus, definitely a phrase you're going to hear at Disney World, though. So that's why I wanted to bring it up today. Let's see. I just touched on this, but um, just to get a little more into it, um, my Disney experience is the app that you can grab on um, your phone. You put it on your phone uh, and just look for Disney World. It's the official Disney World app. And the My Disney Experience app, not only can you make your Fast Pass Plus reservations, but you can 
keep track of all of your reservations there, dining reservations, hotel reservations. Um, you, you can look at uh, what the current wait times are for rides. You can see the schedule for any shows or parades that are happening each day. There's a map. There's a really great interactive map so you can find your way around the parks. Um, and now you can even pre-order food at some of the f- quick service restaurants in Dis- in the Disney parks. So this is definitely something you're going to want to get on your phone. I actually recommend getting it on your phone as soon as you're starting to look at taking a trip because you can use this as a great reference to start looking at how long lines are and what's in the parks and so forth. So um, look for the My Disney Experience app. And also speaking of reservations, there's another one of these acronyms that you're going to come across that um, can seem pretty cryptic unless you know what it is. And that is an ADR. An ADR is an advanced dining reservation. So um, guests for visiting Disney World can make reservations at any of the sit down restaurants in advance. Um, Guests who stay on site can actually make these reservations a half a year in advance. So it really is an advanced dining reservation. And again, this is another thing we're going to talk about in day four when we're talking about um, making reservations ahead of time. So I'm not going to jump too far into this one, but just know when you see ADR, it's a it's a dining reservation. Another thing that you might run into is the Disney dining plan. Disney dining plan is a prepaid meal plan that guests can choose to add on to their vacation package. And a lot of times if you're looking online at maybe you're looking at official Disney Um, dining restaurant menus and stuff, there may be references to the Disney dining plan, or it might say DP. So that's what that is. And that's for guests who are um, participating in the dining plan. That's so they can know uh, kind of how that um, how that item on the menu is going to count into their plan. Okay, some more kind of logistical stuff uh, with touring around the parks. Here's a big one. Magic Band. Okay, the Magic Band is a pretty amazing device. It is like a bracelet, a wristband that goes on your wrist. It has an RFID chip inside of it. And the Magic Band that you're going to wear on your wrist is going to hold your park ticket. It's going to keep track of your fast pass reservations, your dining reservations. Um, Oh, it's your key to your room if you're staying on site at one of the Disney hotels. It's a pretty amazing thing. You can pay for stuff with your magic band. You just tap it on a like a, I don't know, card reader sort of thing at the registers inside the parks. So it really is magical. Um, and anyone who's staying on site at Disney World is going to get a magic band for free. And if you aren't staying on site, but you want to have a magic band, you can also just purchase one. So um, yeah, magic band is a really cool, in, in my opinion, a really cool invention that they've come up with to make things a lot easier for guests in the parks. Okay, now when it comes to tickets... One of the uh, options you're going to find when you're purchasing your tickets is the option to get a park hopper ticket. A park hopper ticket allows you to hop between parks on the same day. So there's also just a single park ticket. So if you purchase single park tickets, then that means you can go to a one single park for the day and you don't have admission to any of the other parks at Disney World. If you buy a park hopper ticket, it allows you to start in one place and then go to another park for part of the day. Some people actually go to all four parks in one day with the park hopper ticket. I think it's awesome. I really like having the flexibility of that. If But if you're someone who just you really know you're going to want to spend the whole day in one park on one day and not hop around, then you may not need a park hopper ticket. But that's what it is. And if you are going from park to park in the same day, that's called park hopping. 
So um, people who like to jump around between the parks like I do, we're park hoppers. So there you go. There's, there's a new, there's another little term for you. Okay. All right. Now let's talk about some other things that you're going to hear in Disney World. One is extra magic hour. So an extra magic hour is time when guests who stay on site at the hotels get to go into the parks or stay in the parks when the rest of the general public can't. So extra magic hours, usually what it is, is an hour before the park opens, there's an extra magic hour for on-site hotel guests. So they get to go in an hour before everyone else. Or extra magic hours can be an hour or sometimes more at the end of the night when on-site guests get to stay in the park when everyone else has to go out. So extra magic hours is an advantage if you stay on site. You can um, have a lot more of the park to yourself during that time. And um, personally, I think extra magic hours can be really, really worth using. Um, And we'll talk more about that as we're discussing um, touring plans and such um, moving forward in these 10 days. Oh, and I should also mention that extra magic hour is often abbreviated to EMH. So uh, if you're looking at a park schedule anywhere and you see something that says like nine o'clock opening time, eight o'clock guests get extra magic hour at eight o'clock in that park. So that's what EMH is. Now, the other thing that kind of goes with this um, same theme in terms of early hours is the term rope drop. So a lot of times you'll hear people say that they got to the park at rope drop. So rope drop is when the park officially opens and you can go into the park. So you might just think that that is the opening time, which would make sense. But rope drop isn't always at the exact time that the park is supposed to open. And let me give you an example. So if you are going to go to Epcot first thing in the morning and it's got a nine o'clock stated opening time, like everywhere, that's the scheduled time. You should arrive at the park before nine o'clock because what is probably going to happen is around around 830 or so, they will probably actually start letting guests through the turnstiles. They'll be checking tickets and they will let guests into the starting part of the park. Most of the parks are like this. They'll they'll often let guests a little bit in past the turnstiles. And then what they do is they hold everyone literally behind a rope. And it's amazing that it works because it can be a lot of really anxious people there. But everybody stays behind the rope. They have cast members there kind of tending it. And uh, so if we're opening at nine o'clock, you're stepping into the park around 830 or so, you wait behind the rope. Well, sometime usually around 845, that's actually when they will let guests go into the park and start getting towards the rides and such. So that is what what's going to happen is the the cast members will have the rope and there's a couple ways they'll do it. Sometimes they literally will just drop the rope and everyone just goes. And that's why it's called rope drop. Um, but other times what they'll do, if there's some ride that's like super popular and they just know everyone wants to go that way, they'll actually kind of keep the, they'll hold the rope and they'll sort of corral the crowd and everyone just has to walk behind the cast members that are holding onto the rope. And then when they get you sort of closer to whatever this big attraction is, that's when they'll take the rope away and let everyone go. So rope drop is definitely a great time to get into the park. Uh, Being there for rope drop is going to make you one of the first ones to any attraction that you want to see in the park. And especially if there's some real hot ticket that you want to see first thing, um, be there for rope drop. So yeah, literally a rope drops. (laughs) There you go. That one's, that one's not too hard to figure out, uh, in terms of why it's called that. Okay, um, here's one, touring plan. So a touring plan is 
is your plan for how you're going to tour in the parks. I guess that sounds pretty obvious, but um, the main thing here, it's important to have a touring plan. So think about ahead of time what you really want to see and how you want to see it. And there are tons of places where you can get advice for how to structure your touring plan to meet whatever expectations you have. And I'm going to talk a little bit about that um, as we're discussing, um, especially as we talk about the individual parks later in these 10 days. And this is also like a topic that we'll be talking about throughout the future episodes of the podcast too. Touring plans is um, a really crucial part of your trip, um, your visit into these theme parks. Okay, so next on my list, I have APH. So APH is annual pass holder. Uh, Sometimes you'll also see AP, annual pass. So annual pass holders uh, have discounts on different things in the parks and some other perks. And sometimes uh, when you're looking at, oh, doing a tour or something where there's an extra charge, you'll see um, AP discount, annual pass. So um, that's what that stands for. Now, don't confuse annual pass with photo pass. Photo pass is the photo service that Disney has on site. So photo photo pass photographers are the official Disney photographers. They're they're all over the parks and they are awesome. <laughs> They'll take your picture um, and it doesn't cost anything for them to take your picture. If you buy the picture, then there's a charge. And when they take your picture, they scan your magic band or give you a little card that's called a photo pass. And that's how you can retrieve the pictures later. If you get a photo pass package, that's called Memory Maker. So Memory Maker includes pretty much any pictures that you take on site at any of the Disney World, um, not just in the parks, but they actually have photo pass photographers in some of the resorts and some of the other areas in Disney World. If you get a Memory Maker package, then everything that they take, all the pictures, ride photos, all of it, it's included in your one price that you pay for Memory Maker. So, um, so just think about it like this, like photo pass is kind of the name of overarching of the photo, um, options that you have at Disney world and memory maker is specifically the, the prepaid photo package that covers all the cost of all your pictures. And I think memory maker is just fabulous. Um, make sure you check it out. I will put, um, I'll put a link to some information about all of this in the show notes, um, which again, you can find at goinform.net slash 10. All right. A few other things here. Uh, TTC. The TTC is the Ticket and Transportation Center. The Ticket and Transportation Center is basically the, um, it's the transportation hub for the Magic Kingdom, which is, uh, it, the Magic Kingdom has a lot of hotels around it, and it's a big park, it's got a, a monorail line. Um, the Ticket and Transportation Center is kind of the hub outside the park for all of this. Um, this is where the main parking lot is for Magic Kingdom. So if you are staying off site or if you're on site and you are driving to Magic Kingdom, that's where you're going to park. Uh, and that's where you can get on the monorail. There's actually more than just the monorail there. There's a, a ferry. Um, you can grab taxis and Ubers here at the Ticket and Transportation Center. And I guess you can buy tickets too. <laughs> So that's what the TTC is. Speaking of transportation, Disney has a bus service that's included for anyone who stays on site. They have a a bus service that goes between Disney World and the Orlando Airport. That is called Magical Express. 
So um, if you are staying on site at Disney World, you'll have the option to book a ride on the Magical Express to pick you up at the airport in Orlando and bring you straight to your hotel at no extra charge. And same thing going back to the airport. And um, so that is pretty magical. (laughs) Okay, let's see. I've got a few more on my list here that are um, just sort of random stuff. The classic characters. Sometimes you will hear people talk about classic characters. And first of all, characters are the, um, they're the characters that you see walking around in the parks or that you can visit in the parks. So that means that can be anything from princesses to Mickey and Minnie to, um, Jack Sparrow, those are all characters. The classic characters are the those original Disney cartoon characters. So that's Mickey and Minnie, Donald and Daisy and Pluto and Goofy. So um, when you hear someone refer to the classic characters, that's who they're talking about. The next one on my list is IP or intellectual property. So I put that might seem like a weird thing to have on the list for Disney stuff. But IP is actually super important at a place like Disney World. Intellectual property means the um, thing. Those are the things that inspire the attraction and the theming in the parks. So IP in Disney parks is things like it's things like the Disney IP, which is Mickey and Minnie and those guys. But it's also, um, well, I guess Disney also owns this Star Wars, Pixar, um, things like the Muppets, um, any of that kind of theming that you're seeing in the parks, that's referred to as IP. And if for people who are really geeking out on this stuff, um, that's kind of a big deal. Because if you really wish there was a Star Trek ride at um, one of these parks, then the next question is, does Disney have the rights to use that IP? So that is where... (laughs) That's where you can really talk like an insider, you guys. I'm giving you an inside tip there. Intellectual property. And a couple other um, Disney terms that you're going to hear and see and hopefully live a little bit on when you're on in the parks there is, first of all, pixie dust. So um, a lot of times you'll hear someone say that they got some extra pixie dust that day. And that just refers to any extra special thing that happens or or a random act of kindness in the parks. And actually, you can spread pixie dust anywhere. So you guys can spread pixie dust in your day right now today if you want. But in Disney World, sometimes that means like a cast member who, you know, found out it was your birthday and gave you an extra, give you a cupcake or something like that, something extra that is pixie dust. And the last thing on my list and along those same lines is magical day. You're going to hear this a lot when you are especially in the magic kingdom. They will tell you all day long to have a magical day. It's just one of those things that you hear in Disney World and Disneyland in the Disney parks, have a magical day. And that is the whole thing that they want you to come away with is is the magic of being in these special places and bringing it into your day and hopefully taking it home with you a little bit too. That is the last thing on my list and one of the most important in my opinion because having a magical day is the whole reason you're going to Disney World, right? So there you go, you guys. That's at least 25 or 30 different terms and phrases that are common to Disney World that um, hopefully will help shed some light on some of the rest of these episodes (laughs) that I'm going to be going through with you guys. A big reason that I wanted to give you all this background is because this is a language that I speak and I'm 
can't help it. And so as we talk about some of the other topics on this 10 days series, I just wanted you guys to know what I was talking about. (laughs) So hopefully this will be really helpful. Tomorrow in day three of this 10 days to a better Disney World vacation, we'll be talking about where to stay at Disney World. That includes not just places on the Disney World property, but I'm going to talk a little bit about if you stay off property too, just to give you a you know, general sense of what your options are. And thanks so much for listening to the podcast today and for joining me for these 10 days to a better Disney World vacation. If you haven't already hit the subscribe button on your podcast app, make sure you do that so you don't miss any other episodes. And I will talk to you tomorrow. I hope you have an amazing vacation.